Today I'm in the quiet village of Ridgel, hidden behind Chew Stoke and on the road to nowhere in particular. But before I get to chat to Miri, there's an important job to do. Their herd of cattle have been kept in since last November. This is the first time they're going back onto grass. They're very keen to get back into this field. They haven't been out for a while. It's really nice to see. Mm. That's uh, amazing. I've never <laughs> it's, like, it's like a frolicking cow. I have never seen a frolicking yeah, cow. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Miri has spent most of her life working on farms. Um, I came to the Jew Valley when I was about 15 and um, desperate to work on a farm. Um, not really from a farming family. And I met Edith George, who was desperate for a girl to work on her farm. And I remember the day, it was actually the day after I was 15, and I looked about 10, and I knocked on her door, and I said, I hear you want a girl on the farm. Um, and I said, I'm stronger than I look. <laughs> and it was, it's been a really good friendship and she's sort of a heroine really because she was widowed at 30, two small children, um, Guernsey cows to milk. Uh, so yeah, she was a great person. She was very strong. When I first saw her, um, she was in overalls, farm overalls, um, and a handsome woman. And she had this great character. Do you remember when the police had panda cars, Morris Thousands, and she had a Morris Thousand, and uh, she was always speeding. And the policeman stopped her and he said, do you know how fast you were going, madam? And she said, I oh, you know, they're good little cars, aren't they? <laughs> I was always desperate for a dog. Um, and I actually came to leave home because of a dog. I, I, in those days, you could just go to Bristol Dogs Home and pay a pound and you came away with a dog, which was appalling, really. I hadn't asked my parents. Um, so I brought home this black Labrador and my father said, whose is this? And I said, mine. And he gave her a fortnight, I think, to calm down and stop chasing the cats. And she didn't. So I went into Bristol. I was at um, West of England Art College then. So I said I'd move with her. And she came to college with me. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be allowed now. She had her own seat next to me at Art College. <laughs> so you've brought together the two great loves of your life, really, art and animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary eventually married a Bristolian and moved to Wales, where they ended up on a 100-acre hill farm. So how many sheep were on there? Uh, we had 330. Wow of Welsh mountain sheep. Gosh. So gathering those in was a big... Yeah, deal. yeah, yeah. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. A few dogs. Um, <laughs> and 100 acres is nothing there because it's, it's quite barren land. We only had, say, 30 acres of good land. Mm. Um, but you had the mountain grazing, so we'd turn them to the mountain and, wow. um, yeah, to give the land a rest. A bit more dramatic than the Chew Valley. <laughs> Totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very bleak. Uh, when we went there, it rained every day for three months, which was a bit grim. <laughs> and the children were little. Yeah. When I, I, I looked into your work a bit, you seem to be best known as a, an artist of sheep. Yes, yeah. Is, are they your favourite subject? Yeah, probably sheep and collies. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do do um, cattle and horses. Um, I think... I think I started with sheep because I had the subjects around me and uh, it was really hard to make a living there. I got a grant from the Welsh Arts Council and started a little card business and I called it Slightly Sheepish and it's still <laughs> going. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started painting sheep alongside farming them just to make some money and then it just took off and I started going to agricultural shows with stands and yeah. yeah. All through her life, Mary and Georgie remained close friends. Sadly, Georgie died at the age of 97 last September. But yeah, she was resilient, um, 
self-sufficient, yes, very, very strong person. And she always supported my artwork and my writing. She has great faith in me. We haven't talked about your writing. I've been writing for years. I've just had one published in uh, July last year, and they described it as Welsh noir, which I was quite pleased about. <laughs> so it is memories of your life, or is it a novel? Oh, no, it's novel? fiction. It's fiction. It's called Where Crows Would Die. Oh, lovely title. And that's because the rogue in the story I was discussing with a farmer, and he said, oh, do do, he'd live where crows would die. And that meant he could live anywhere and nothing. Now, this might seem strange, but after many years in Wales, Mary is now living with Michael in Ridgel, in the very farm that Georgie grew up in. To make your story come full circle, explain how you came to be back here. Well, I've known Michael since I was 18 because Georgie, Edith George, was his aunt. So I did a painting for him. Yeah, and then I started to see him again, and then I came here to live with him. <laughs> <laughs> Very simply put. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Calves are all named by the grandchildren. Um. <laughs> this little one, little black one's called Zoe. I don't know whether it's a good idea to name them or not, because well, we've got to go to the market. That's, yes. But yeah, they like to skip around a bit. It's good for, the, they, they must really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've sort of done a full circle, really. I started off here. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of friends here. I've, 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 I've rooted myself quite a few times, but coming back here, I've been here nearly 20 years now. It's a special place. It is a special place, yeah. Mm. And actually, you know, funny enough, I was just saying to Mike, Ridgel, it's kind of like tucked away. Yes, yeah. If you, you, know, if just... you don't know about it, I mean, if you didn't have to come to Redgill, you wouldn't go through it to, unless you wanted to get to Nemnethrop well. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people haven't heard about it. And then some people mistake it for Red Hill. Um, and of course, it's on some of the old signs, it's Ridge Hill. And it's the same place. So, uh, yeah, it is, it is very tucked away. Mm. Yeah. And it, of course, in the COVID, it's been really, really quiet. Before, you know, the, well, 2019, you could hear the planes, but now it's completely different. It is like stepping back in time. It isn't is, it? yeah. Less it's, traffic, no planes. Yeah, lovely, yeah. Mm. And lots more people walking. Yeah. I walk the yeah. dog twice a day, and normally, you know, last year I didn't see anybody, but uh, mm. now mm. everybody's out and about. Mm.